While performing weak frequency calculations, one of the best solutions is to install a thermowell on an elbow. This is one of the most cost effective solutions. You don't have to reduce the U length and go for non standard lens or use crouton well or other special type of thermowells, but it has its own pros and cons. During an elbow installation, I've realized that a lot of criteria need to be taken into consideration and these are specially divided into these four criteria. I've tried to make a simple checklist explaining practical examples in this video as to what are these four criteria for elbow installation. Let us look into the first criteria, which is the most important criteria, thermoval tip facing criteria. What does this criteria state? It states that example, this is your pipe and this is an elbow. Now here's your flow direction. So how would you install your thermoval on this elbow? Should it be installed like this or should it be installed like this? Isn't this a bit confusing? You might wonder that does it even have any effect on the thermoval? It has an extremely high effect on the thermoval. Let's look as to what the international standards have to say about such an installation. The most well-renowned recognized standard for thermovels is ASME PTC 19.3. This is widely accepted standard throughout the world. What does this standard say? It states that the tip must be facing towards the flow direction. Have you wondered why does it say that? And I think after this explanation, you would also agree with the standards recommendation that why should the tip be facing the flow direction and not the other way around. Let's take the example of case one where here's your elbow and here's the direction of flow. Now you install your thermoval like this. Did you notice the area which is getting exposed towards the flow? This is the area which has higher chances of one Corman vortices to be created, which in turn would create vibrations and at resonant frequency, it could damage the thermoval greatly. Now let us look at case two. In case two, if you see this elbow and let's keep the flow direction same as previous case. However, we'll change the installation of the thermoval. We install like this, the tip facing towards the flow. Now, do you see a difference? Let's see the area which is exposed towards the flow, which is perpendicular to the flow. It's a very small area and thus the chances of von Kármán vortices is greatly reduced and thus there would be less vibrations and thus we can significantly reduce the effect of von Kármán vortices on the thermoval. Now, the next criteria which is usually ignored is the approval from other disciplines. We assume that what approval would be required from other discipline. But after this example, you will realize that that is also a very important factor that needs to be taken into consideration. So here, imagine that this is your piping system and here you're having oil and this fluid is water. You have to install your thermoval here. Now you see an elbow to the right side. What if we install a thermoval there? Would it be a good choice like this? The tip facing towards the flow it approves the first criteria of tip facing towards the flow. But what about the process criteria? Is the process interested to measure the temperature of water and oil together or just that of oil? In this case, this would not be a correct installation. Why? Because maybe the process has certain other demands that need to be taken into consideration. We need to look for such cases. I hope you're finding these videos valuable and interesting. And I hope that these videos are making a positive difference in your life and in your career. I'll appreciate if you could subscribe or click the bell icon so that every Saturday you can receive a new video. And I'm really thankful for the amazing comments that you have given. I really appreciate that. Now let's look into the next criteria, which is the clearance space for thermovels. What does this criteria state? This criteria is an easy criteria, but often gets forgotten. And this is that imagine that this is your elbow and you have to install your thermoval from here to here, which is the elbow as we stated. It seems to be simple, right? But what if there's a pipe nearby to it? How would you remove the 
thermo well from the process this seems to be a confusing issue and if you notice that in such cases there is no clearance space provided and for the operations team it will be extremely difficult and thus this is not a good engineering practice we should not follow such places where there is absolutely no place to remove the thermo well out but you would have the next question as to what should be the clearance space how much clearance space should we give for this one of my most recommended practice that i personally find very valuable is apa rp551 standard and this standard states that the clearance space should be total length of the thermo well plus 76 mm or 3 inches so a little bit of safety margin added so you can remove the entire length of thermo well outside if you want to dig deep into it here's the page number which is page number 25 of api rp551 where you can dig deep into the standard now we look into the final criteria which is the ease of accessibility this is especially true for test wells because test wells are where people have to consistently go there and check for the temperature at regular intervals now imagine that you are in the plant and you're looking for getting the temperature reading this is your piping system and here's your thermo well attached so you go to the test well you put your thermometer and insert it into the thermo well or measure the temperature or you just have to measure the temperature which is shown on the indicator now this seems to be easy but imagine that we see this flow direction and we install the thermo well up here with the tip facing towards the flow now it's an elbow so oh wow it's good but did you notice something the distance now you need a ladder to access this so if this thermo well is required to be accessed frequently or it's a test well where you will have to go in frequent intervals and check the temperature it is extremely difficult there are safety issues to it like having the ladder taking permissions and it would be a lot of hassle for the operations team so for such cases you also need to take such approvals from client or the operation team that will such non accessible thermo wells be acceptable to them if they are not acceptable then we should look for some other criteria for wake frequency calculations and like example twisted thermo wells or reducing the u length etc now let's quickly revise the concepts that we have learned here the first criteria was the tip facing towards the flow so if the tip is facing towards the flow then we are good to go so less area is exposed less chances of one kerman vortices and less chances of the thermo well being exposed to such high vibrations the second one was approval from other disciplines where we saw that uh, the process had oil and water and we had to measure the temperature of oil so we had to see exactly where the tapping is possible or feasible for other departments the third criteria which we saw was the clearance space we need to see that the space should be sufficient enough for the thermo well to be removed out of the process we saw about apa rp standard which says the clearance space should be the length of the thermo well plus 3 inches extra to it now the final criteria was the accessibility part of it so we had seen that if a person needs to access it frequently then we need to take special permissions from the client or from the operations team that will such installations be feasible to them and how frequently they want to access the thermo well i would love to share this small gift with you but before that if you are liking these videos then please subscribe or press the bell icon i would really appreciate that and i thank you for all the comments that you have given and all the appreciation and motivation that i have received for making such videos this is a small gift for you i have written a completely free ebook on engineering standards it's on pip standards which were my first standards that i had gone through they are very small 3 to 4 pages and very simple in their uh, way that they have communicated the engineering uh, aspects in terms of the selection criteria or the fabrication standards etc and there were 1500 plus downloads just in the first two days of its release and engineers from shell dupont technep wally etc have found it very valuable the link is given in the description below 
if you have any doubts with respect to this video or any technical doubt i would love to have a technical discussion i would love to share whatever little knowledge i have with you so you can contact me through the comment sections below or through my linkedin page or through my website thank you so much and i appreciate all the comments all the things of motivation that you have given thank you so much